Okay. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Good. Hold that. Nice. Nice. Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and we are back for another trip video. This is the first video you are finding of his because you're struggling yourself with your dog coming back to you when you call them. We're gonna be actually working on collar condition to recall today. It's not uh, been a huge issue for him, which is why trip is mm, nine months old. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, is that pretty close? Yeah, spot on, nine months old, okay? So typically with our short hairs, versatile breeds in general, they are independent creatures. So they spend their life out there doing things. And when we work with dependent creatures or retrievers or fleshers on, on average, they're going to be dogs that are going to be more cooperative for a longer period of time in the beginning stages and may not even need collar conditioning at all. We're big advocates for it because it's a great way to communicate with your dog. And we showed how we started with him specifically, collar conditioning to a place board. So go back and watch that video. We are just basically following along with, he wants the bumper. We're following along with our Retriever Flusher online training course. It's available at standingstonesupply.com slash courses. And I'm gonna just take a second to show you. I'm using DT Systems H201820 collar and we're going to set this up in the smallest part of his neck. He's got lots of fluffies, so this can be hidden a little bit. But when we tuck this in here, we want to put two to three fingers between the belt and his neck, tighten that all the way down on there, and then basically back it off one hole. It needs to be snug, but your dog shouldn't be going, ah, too tight, too tight. It's much the way that my little boy gives me hugs around the neck. That's kind of our fun game in the evening. But... <laughs> Um, we're going to be working on collar condition to recall today now that he is really, really good at collar conditioning to a place board. So with independent dogs, with independent dogs, we need to focus on them coming back to us. With the dependent dogs, we kind of teach them to go away from us first with collar conditioning. So um, what we will be started out here with, I have a keep his focus thing. A lot of times this is going to be food rewards or treats, but for him specifically, bumpers are king. So we will use this to keep momentum rolling in our session. Um, because he already has an understanding of how to shut the collar off and he knows recall, this should be a fairly simple process or look simple. The timing here is the key. I will lift my transmitter up when I'm hitting the vibrate button. And when he gets to me, that's when it is shutting off and I'll try and drop my hand at the same time, but it'll be on off. So you've got a little bit of a visual while things are going. So to begin with here, very first rep, we're gonna go trip here, okay? That looks simple. He already knows recall and he's really, really good at this. So it is collar conditioning. That is what we call this. Collar conditioning is the key Conditioning, sorry, part of that is the key to this process. You have to do reps in a conditioning process in order to get good at it. Okay, I'm gonna throw him a fun one for him to stay upbeat about our session. Good boy, good boy. Sitting, nice hold. I want you to turn around and show me that. Try and work on all aspects of, that's fine. Come up here, love on me. Try and work on all aspects of the process. Just because this is not a specific retrieving session doesn't mean that we can't continue to build off of our retrieving goals. Trip here. Good boy. Yes. If we did our first step in collar conditioning correctly and all of the groundwork previous to this, we've put a lot of emphasis on recall work. He's been doing it since he was a little puppy. Go back and watch those videos. We work on targeting, we develop that inside and outside, and we put a lot of time in with a long line so we can build consistency. All of these tools like the collar, the leashes, all of that stuff's available on our online store, standingstonesupply.com. Another rep here. 
Trip. Trip. Here. Go away. Distractions. Okay, we've got a camera set up and a camera manager. That's Cat today. Um, he tried to check that out as an option. I kept vibrate on the whole time. Once he got to me, it shut off. That is the most important part of this entire process. When you're starting with your dog, you need to turn the collar on, ask something they already know, be prepared to help them through it, and then as soon as they complete the task, and only when they complete the task, you need to shut the collar off. So that becomes his understanding that the only way this is going on is by completing what I've been asked to do. It's very common that people try this process at home, their dog throws a wrench at them, does something silly like runs and hides under the couch, jumps into the other room, just because it's enough different, enough startling a little bit, if you will, because it's new. And then you don't know as the handler what to do, you shut the collar off, you've essentially just reinforced them running away or them avoiding the situation. So we've got to be prepared if you need help you can specifically reach out to us at patreon.com slash standing some kennels. We can set up a live consult where I'm in the session with you and can give you direct feedback on how to make adjustments to be successful. Okay. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Good. Hold that. Nice. Nice. Okay. Come on. Another wrap here. Trip here. Good boy. That's a good pup. I like to give this guy some love. This is something he really enjoys. It is something that we're going to fix a bit as he gets older, less kind of crawling up into your lap, but at the same time, he's super cute and this is fun. So some things can be, okay, some things can kind of be ignored in training that's not perfect. You just have to balance out with, good. You have to balance out with, is this long-term going to be a huge issue? If I kneel down at his level and he kind of half gently, cutely crawls into my lap, I don't think this is a long-term issue. And that for me is a decision I have to make. It's, it's no different than if you're working with your dog and you say, I want them to jump up to greet me. Now think that one through completely. <laughs> Pro tip here, whatever your dog is doing, expect them to do it for everybody that they meet. So if you don't think that a dog should jump up on people that they meet, maybe not encourage that one. If somebody gets down on his level and he's happy to climb in their lap, it's a totally different story. Hey, good. Okay. We'll go ahead and do one more rep here, trip here. I want to um, point out one other thing that I'm doing in this process. And this is something that we coach from a developing retrieving standpoint, and that is just Getting down in an inviting position does two things. One, it shows him where to cue off of, where he's supposed to go. If you're in a small crowd of people or a large crowd of people, it's easy for the dog to pick out who specifically is calling them. But the other side of it is you're on their level. This is inviting. You can encourage and invite them to come to you when you are down. So the other side, the last piece of that would be movement in general, me moving helps to draw his attention. He's good at picking up on movement. That pulls his attention as a predator. Have a retreat, kid. Okay. I'm going to do one more rep with him probably, and then we will call this a great first session for collar conditioning to recall. There you go. Let's go. Okay. Good boy. Here? Good. And that, folks, is where we will end this right here for a fun one. Go get it, buddy. Um, if you have any questions, again, like I mentioned before, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Patreon.com slash Kennels. And with that, folks, this is uh, Trip. I'm the guy with the paint gun. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.